In this video, we will learn about stereo vision. Specifically, we'll learn about the following topics. Understanding what stereo vision is and how it works. Importing and displaying stereo vision images in MATLAB. Calibrating stereo vision cameras. Rectifying images to align them horizontally. Generating disparity maps. And creating point clouds with scene reconstruction. Stereo vision is the process of comparing two or more views of the same scene and recovering the depth information from the camera images by estimating the relative depth of points in the scene. The output of this computation is a 3D point cloud, where each 3D point corresponds to a pixel in one of the images. It is used in applications such as Advanced Driver Assistance Systems ADAS, or Robot Navigation, where stereo vision is used to estimate the actual distance or range of object of interest from the camera. Humans have two eyes side by side with a little distance between them. This provides each eye with a different angle of the same viewing area. We can verify this if we try holding our finger in front of our face and try alternating opening and closing one eye at a time. The brain processes the images from both the eyes, combining them into a 3D image with depth information. Stereo vision cameras use the same principle to estimate depth. If we take a look at this image, as humans we can immediately perceive the depth in it and see that the lady is closer to us than the man in the black shirt. And it would be great if we could use this information to extract objects from an image. The good news is we can. Stereo vision allows us to do just that. It gives us a point cloud from the image where we can specify the depth information to extract out just the lady and filter out the rest of the image. Or maybe we can specify the depth information for the gentleman and keep only him and his surroundings. So now that we have a good understanding of what stereo vision is, how it works, and how it can be useful for our applications, we need to know how to acquire stereo vision images. To acquire stereo vision images, we can either use an integrated stereo vision camera, such as the Z or the Bumblebee 2, or we can use multiple camera, example two USB cameras. The advantage to using an integrated stereo vision camera is that it offers less error than a custom multiple camera setup. An integrated stereo vision camera provides hardware triggering such that two images are taken at the exact same moment. With multiple camera setups, images must be taken one at a time from each camera. The lenses in an integrated stereo vision camera do not move with respect to each other which eliminates motion artifacts that occur if you use individual cameras and if an object moves between captures. This means that the camera calibration always remains accurate. A rig needs to be designed to ensure that in a multiple camera setup, the cameras do not move, that is shift, oscillate or shake with respect to each other. Please refer to the Importing and Visualization Videos training module to get detailed explanation on configuring cameras for image acquisition and acquiring images from a camera. MATLAB files such as the single capture and timed capture have been provided for convenience to acquire images from a left and right camera. You can look at these to understand better how to work with stereo camera acquisition. Even for monovision cameras, the concept of camera calibration is an important one. An image is a 2D representation of a 3D real world scene. The mapping from world to image can be described mathematically by a series of transformations. The goal of camera calibration is to estimate the parameters for these transformations. The extrinsic parameters describe the location of the camera coordinate system within the world coordinate system, so basically where the camera is placed in the world. The intrinsic parameters are required for the mapping from 3D camera coordinates to 2D image coordinates. For stereo vision cameras, Accurate camera calibration becomes even more essential because we can then use it to recover depth from images. A stereo system consists of two cameras. So in addition to traditional calibration, we also need to calibrate the orientation of camera 2 relative to camera 1. In MATLAB, there is a stereo camera calibrator app which estimates the parameters of each of the two cameras. There are six steps in the process of stereo camera calibration. The first step of the camera calibration process, prepare images, needs you to prepare a checkerboard pattern. This section is explained in depth in our documentation. Let's switch to MATLAB to take a look. The computer vision system toolbox provides a function for segmenting the checkerboard. 
This function is also used by the Stereo Camera Calibrator app, which greatly simplifies the calibration process. To be used with the toolbox functions, the checkerboard must fulfill the following criteria. One side of the checkerboard pattern must have an even number of squares, while the other side must have an odd number. Follow the instructions here to create the checkerboard pattern. Also make a note of the size of the checkerboard square. Next, to properly calibrate your camera, follow these rules. And finally, go through the Capture Images section before taking images for the calibration app. Let's go back to the presentation to look at the rest of the steps in the calibration process. Once we have captured the images of the checkerboard pattern, we add them to the Stereo Calibrator app. The app then calibrates the stereo parameters for us. We can evaluate the results by looking at the reprojection errors, which are the distances and pixels between the detected and the reprojected points. The app first detects checkerboard points from the image pairs. It then calculates reprojection errors by projecting the checkerboard points from world coordinates defined by the checkerboard into image coordinates. It then compares the reprojected points to the corresponding detected points. As a general rule, reprojection errors of less than one pixel are acceptable. We can also look at the 3D extrinsic parameters plot, which provides a camera-centric view of the patterns to evaluate calibration accuracy. The camera-centric view is helpful if the camera was stationary when the images were captured. This view helps us examine the relative positions of the patterns and the camera to see if they match what we expect. We can remove outlier images and recalibrate to improve results and finally export the calibrated stereo parameters. Let's switch back to MATLAB to work through the rest of the steps of the calibration process with the Stereo Calibrator app. I will be using the same images used in the documentation example for this section, which I have saved in the folder Stereo Left and Stereo Right. Let's open the app from the Apps tab. Navigate to Image Processing and Computer Vision and click on the app Stereo Camera Calibrator. Now we need to add the checkerboard pattern images. Let's click on Add Images. Add Images accepts two folders as inputs. The first folder holds all the images for the first camera and the second folder for the second camera. I'll add Stereo Left to the folder for Camera 1 and Stereo Right to the folder for Camera 2. For the documentation example, the size of the checkerboard square is 108 mm. Please ensure that you are entering the correct size for your checkerboard square for this step as this is very important for accurate calibration. In the data browser, all accepted images are displayed and you can select them to display the image and the recognized points. In the image, the origin and the direction of X and Y axis are also displayed. To calibrate the camera, click on the green arrow. The extrinsic plot visualization provides us with the camera-centric view with the relative positions of the captured images or patterns. We can select a pattern in the visualization here and it will correspond to the image in the list. This view helps us examine the relative positions of the patterns and the camera and see if they match what we expect. For these set of images, we can see the reprojection error is already pretty low at 0.09. We can try to reduce this further. Let's select the image pairs whose mean error in pixels is currently well above the mean. This gives us the option to remove and recalibrate. Let's do that. We can see that the reprojection error is now brought down to 0.08. Another evaluation of calibration accuracy is stereo rectification. In the image pane, click Show Rectified. If the calibration was accurate, the images should become undistorted and row aligned. Also, if needed, we can estimate various camera distortions such as radial, tangential and skew using this section of the app here. Once we are happy with the results, we can export the camera parameters by clicking on the green check mark, Export Camera Parameters. This gives us the option to not only export the stereo parameters, but also the estimation errors to workspace. Let's check this option. We now have two variables in the workspace, which is also shown in the command window. Stereo params contains the intrinsic parameters of the two cameras. The geometric relationship between the two cameras, like rotation, translation, and point-to-point -point mapping transforms, mean projection error, 
and calibration settings like number of image pairs used, number of checkerboard points, etc. Estimation errors contains the intrinsic errors of camera 1 and camera 2, extrinsic error of camera 1, and rotation and translation error of camera 2 relative to camera 1. Once the cameras have been accurately calibrated, these parameters can now be saved in a mat file and used as needed. Let's go back to the presentation to view the depth extraction example again and see what steps we need to take to be able to achieve it. We saw earlier that by using stereo vision cameras, we can extract just the lady from the image by using the depth information from it. There is a process we need to follow to do this. First, given the left and right stereo image pair, we will be using the stereo parameters from a camera to first rectify the images to remove distortions and horizontally align the image pairs. Next, we'll create a disparity map by matching every pixel in the left-hand image with its corresponding pixel in the right-hand image and computing the distance between the pixel values, the disparities. Rectifying the images reduces the process of matching pixels in the left and right images to a horizontal or one-dimensional search and makes it a lot faster. With the help of the disparity map and the stereo parameters, we can reconstruct a 3D version of the image in a point cloud. We can then index into the depth or z-axis of the point cloud to create and apply a mask. All three of these steps need the stereo parameters to be able to accurately do real-world measurements. Let's go back to MATLAB to try out these steps. Let's open the skeleton script, depth extraction example. This script loads a set of stereo parameters to the workspace and reads in a pair of left and right images from a stereo camera. Note that these stereo parameters are not the same as the ones we just calibrated using the stereo camera calibrator app. These parameters are relevant to the camera that was used to capture the scene left and scene right images, although the process used to create them was the same. Stereo parameter calibrations are matched to the cameras and will not work with different camera images, so we always need to ensure that we are using the correct stereo parameters for the correct camera from which the images were captured. Let's display the images before rectification using I am show pair and run this section. Notice the difference in the height between the two silhouettes. The rectify stereo images function uses the input images and the stereo parameters to return undistorted and rectified images. Let's display the results by copying the lines from above and modifying them. And rerun the section. We can see that after rectification the two images have become aligned horizontally. We do this step because we need to create a disparity map which needs rectified images as inputs. A disparity map is simply a map of pixel displacements between the left and right images. Rectified images make the process of matching pixels in the left and right images considerably faster as the search will be horizontal or one-dimensional. We can create the disparity map using the disparity function in MATLAB which takes the grayscale rectified images as input. It can be viewed using the IM show function. Let's run this section to see what we have so far. Notice how the image seems binary. A standard disparity map tends to have high contrast, which makes gradients less apparent. Let's check the maximum and minimum value in the disparity map in the command window. Observe that the contrast is extremely high due to the minimum value being extremely low. We can modify the image contrast by adding a lower and upper bound to the call to IM show. This forces intensity values less than or equal to low as black and values more than or equal to high as white. Let's rerun this section. This looks much better. We can also change the color map from grayscale to something a little more colorful by using the color map function. Jet is one of the options of the color map function. For more options, please refer to the documentation for color map. We can also add a color bar to get some perspective on the color intensities. In this case, pixels closest to us have highest pixel displacement or disparity and so appear in red and objects furthest away appear in blue. As a comparison, to see why we needed to use rectified images to create the disparity map, let's use the unrectified images to create it and visualize it by copying the above section and changing the input images to the unrectified ones. Since these images are not horizontally aligned and are still distorted, matching pixels in the left and right images in this case is difficult and doesn't give very meaningful results. Now that we have a disparity map, we are ready to generate the point cloud. 
We can do so by using the reconstruct scene function. This estimates the exact depth for each image point in the rectified image and returns an array of 3D world point coordinates that reconstruct a scene from the disparity map and the stereo parameters. The point cloud can be viewed by the PC show command. Let's run this section. Often we'll have to remove outlying data from stereo vision generated point clouds. This can be performed by a simple thresholding operation. In this case, the x ticks are at 50,000 and our data appears to be about one tenth of it. So let's threshold the x axis from negative 5,000 to 5,000. Similarly, the y ticks are also at 50,000. But our data appears to be thinner. So let's threshold from negative 2000 to 2000. And for the z axis, let's threshold from 0 to 10,000. Finding the correct threshold values may take some trial and error. A function has been provided to demonstrate the process of thresholding called Threshold PC. Now let's view the point cloud by copying the lines from above. Let's run the section again. Now even though the size of the point cloud seems controlled, the colors don't seem to match. This is because it is using the colors from the disparity map and not the colors from the original image. To add color to the point cloud visualization, we can add one of the rectified images as a second argument to the PC show function. Let's run this section to see the difference. This looks much better. Now for the last section. All we have to do is extract the lady from the image based on her depth in the image. Let's run the last section one more time to look at the z-axis or the depth plane to see where she is located. And we can see that she is located somewhere between 3200 and 3700 in the z-axis. Let's extract the z-axis of the point cloud and set our lower and upper bounds. Then we find all the indices in the point cloud where z is higher than z low and lower than z high. Basically, this selects everything in our area of interest. We can then visualize the mask using IM show. Let's run the section. Now we have to apply the mask. The mask, however, needs to be applied on all three RGB layers of the image. And so it needs to be replicated three times. We can do this using the repmat function. Also, let's make a copy of the image to apply the mask to. Then we use logical indexing to set every point where the mask is zero to zero in the image. We can visualize the result by copying the lines from above. Let's run the section. So here is the final image where we have extracted a portion of the stereo image based on depth. Let's go back to the presentation to recap what we did so far. After calibrating our cameras and getting the stereo parameters, we learned how it could be used as an input to the function rectify stereo images to remove distortions and horizontally align stereo image pairs. This step reduces point correspondences to a one-dimensional or horizontal search and is necessary to create a disparity map. A disparity map matches every pixel in the left-hand image with its corresponding pixel in the right-hand image and computes the distance between the pixel values. We created a disparity map from the two rectified images using the disparity function in MATLAB. We also saw that unless the two input images were rectified, the results from the disparity function did not give meaningful results. We were then able to generate a point cloud using the reconstruct scene function, which uses the disparity map and the stereo parameters to estimate the exact depth for each image point in the rectified image and returns an array of 3D world point coordinates that reconstruct a scene. Once we had the point cloud, we could view the z-axis as the depth plane and find the location of the lady and create a mask, which we could then apply on the original image to extract the lady out. Some things to look out for when working with stereo vision. During calibration of the stereo vision camera, having a low pixel error is necessary to obtain an accurate disparity map. As a general rule, reprojection errors of less than one pixel are acceptable. Stereo vision depends on features to create disparity map. To be able to locate and differentiate the features, the images need to have sufficient detail and the objects sufficient texture or non-uniformity. As a direct example, creating a point cloud from a smooth road with no obvious features would be difficult. In summary, we learned what stereo vision is and how it works, how to import it into MATLAB and visualize it, why calibrating stereo cameras is important and how to do it. And once it's done, how we can use stereo parameters to rectify images and generate disparity maps, and how to create point clouds with scene reconstructions.
This concludes this video.